In this video, we're gonna discuss the different settings on your Upwork profile and what should be on, what should be off, what are the pros and cons of hiding your earnings versus not hiding your earnings, what are some of the main features of the Upwork profile and how should you optimize those that will actually make your profile most attractive to a client and not turn them off because some of it is not what you think. There's some things that Upwork advertises as a good thing, but it's actually not and it's hurting your ability to get clients. And I'm gonna go over what those are. So I'm in my settings here in my Upwork account. And um, obviously visibility, you want to be public because that means that your Upwork profile can show up in Google search. I've actually had some clients come from finding my profile in Google search for my job title and not just an Upwork search. Um, and then the next one, project preference, both short-term and long-term projects. You don't want to limit yourself to just one or the other because sometimes clients will filter out in their searches of uh, freelancers that are available for both. A lot, most freelancing gigs, um, they work as a short-term project or a long-term project, depending on whether that client wants to keep hiring you and have you come back. Um, so don't limit yourself here and make sure this is on both. Earnings privacy. <clears throat> It didn't used to be this way, but now you have to have Upwork Plus in order to hide your earnings. Um, I only I only literally a few minutes ago signed up for Upwork Plus just as an experiment. I've never needed to sign up for it, um, but I want to experiment with it so I can give some information to you all on whether it's worth it to have it or not. Um, so now it's so I've never hid my Upwork earnings before. Now I have the option to. Let's see what this little question mark says here. It says, please note, but by the check in this option, you'll not show up in search results if a client chooses to filter the results by earnings. Um, so yeah, that does limit you. Uh, honestly, there is no reason to hide your earnings um, because if you're hiding them, the client just assumes that you've barely earned anything. And so you might as well just show what you've earned anyways, <laughs> because you can always back up your experience through other means by having a good portfolio attachment in your proposals. Who cares if you've barely earned anything on Upwork? That doesn't mean you haven't earned anything elsewhere or that you don't have the skills and the experience to back it up. And so hiding your earnings, in my opinion, just makes you look a little more dodgy, like you're not totally secure with yourself and you don't like the fact that you've only earned $500 on Upwork and it's just it, it doesn't exude a ton of confidence to go ahead and hide those. Um, so that really does not need to be an option at all. So I would not check that box. Experience level. Um, I've had freelancers ask before, if I'm just starting on Upwork, am I supposed to do entry level? Um, and that is not correct. It does not say here, if you're new to Upwork, <laughs> it says I'm relatively new to this field. So if you're a new video editor and that's what your freelance gig is, and you're just starting to figure out how I don't want to change that. <laughs> Sorry. And you're just starting to figure out how to use Adobe Premiere. And you're 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 an okay editor, you're not great, your skills are very new, then yeah, you want to do entry level. But if you have really stellar video editing skills, you're quick, you're on top of it, you got all your keyboard shortcuts, you're very creative, you're efficient with how you edit videos, then you should do expert. And are there any other conditions of doing expert? No, it doesn't matter if you've ever had a paying client. When I started video editing as a freelancer, cause that's what I did at first. Um, I've been editing videos since I was like 10 years old. Ever since there was even video editing software, I had like Adobe Premiere version one on my very slow computer and I was learning how to edit videos and make little movies and videos and everything growing up. So by the time I got into college, I was very efficient with it and I had all the creativity hacks and stuff with video editing. And then after college, when I actually started to think about trying to earn money, I shouldn't have waited that long, but um, I had expert video editing skills. So regardless of me not earning any money as a video editor, Look what it says here. I have comprehensive and deep expertise in the field. It has nothing to do with how many clients you've had. It has nothing to do with how much money you've made or how many years you've been 
doing it professionally, what matters is your skill level. That's what it's actually asking here. Experience is not being defined by the number of years or by how many paid clients you've had. It's simply what your skill level is in that thing. Um, <clears throat> and of course, depending on what you're doing, you're going to have to evaluate that for yourself and just get some feedback from people that you've done things for if you're not sure, or just go and look at other freelancers' profiles who have their profile as an expert and see what kind of work they've done. And if you feel like your work is up to par with theirs, then guess what? You go and click expert on your profile. If you feel like, oh, whoa, after watching that video, your skills are not nearly as good as that guy's, then maybe you do entry level or intermediate. Um, and just so you know, you can climb up this very quickly. Because I wasn't confident in my in my experience. I had it in my head that I didn't have enough years of experience. When I first went on Upwork, I had intermediate checked. I never did entry level, but I was stuck here for like two years before I went up to expert because I was thinking I had to have a certain number of years or paid clients on my belt before I could do intermediate. Um, so that's, that's something important to understand there. And then um, the design... So yeah, then you have your categories um, and you can adjust these as you go along and evolve. Okay, now over at my profile. Um, again, they didn't give, like they don't have many options on the, uh, um, the settings page. Um, that's just those few. But then in the actual profile, of course you can go in here and edit all sorts of different aspects here. Um, this one is still only, yeah, the specialized profiles. I have not actually really used the specialized profiles. I've still just used my general one. Um, so I can't really comment much on that. Um, but let's go back to the profile. Um, so I'm not going to go over the details of like titles, descriptions. That's in plenty of other videos. We're just talking about settings today. Um, I just recently experimented with the availability badge and booster profile. They were wildly not successful. It didn't do anything in increasing the views or the invites. I'm pretty sure it actually went down. I think my job invites went down since I turned it on. So I think part of it, if you're going to think in, if you're going to put yourself in the client's shoes, if I'm a client looking for freelancers because it advertises to the client if you've boosted your profile. It has, has a little lightning bolt and it says that it was boosted. Or if you have the availability badge on, it basically says that you're paying to make your profile show up higher in rankings and be available. Um, so in my mind as a client, if I'm seeing a freelancer paying to boost their profile, it means that they're more desperate for clients because they're having to pay to get their profile to rank rather than it just naturally ranking because they're getting a lot of work and they're doing a good job. And so that could possibly be why my job advice actually went down because all of a sudden they see that I'm available. So it's like, why would somebody that's being successful be available 24 um, seven? And why would they have to boost their profile just to be seen? Um, if they're an expert and they know what they're doing, shouldn't um, they not have to do that? So that's my thought and why it went down. So I just recently turned that off today because I'm not going to keep wasting connects on that. Um, but yeah, that's my conclusion there. Hours per week. I've always had it at less than 30. I think it's stupid that Upwork only has the option of more than 30 or less than 30. <laughs> As needed, open for offers shows that you're basically getting no work and uh, um, that can turn the client off. Less than 30 is a good, uh, a good one to set. Even if you have more hours than 30 available because you're just starting, you have no clients, put less than 30. In the long run, as a family man, if you're a family man, family woman, you don't want to be working more than 30 hours a week. It starts to crunch into that time that you know your your family needs you, and um, so just put less than thirty. Um, and uh, yeah, don't check I'm open to contract to hire opportunities. 
It basically shows that you're willing to abandon freelancing and become a W-2 employee. So, and you shouldn't be ever willing to abandon freelancing uh, to just get an employee job. <clears throat> and then here's just self-explanatory stuff. Definitely get your ID verified. Um, then, uh, yeah, and other videos I've gone over, like how to build out your portfolio, the skills section. I just wanted to go over some of the technical settings. Um, <clears throat> now, as you'll see, something else I wanted to show you while we're in here. Sorry, I'm overcoming a cold. Um, you see how there's no feedback given on almost everything on this page. <laughs> so uh, don't don't copy me in this. Um, I ended up starting to get a lot of clients on Upwork and I stopped staying on top of closing contracts when the project was over. Clients are just as busy as a freelancer who's busy. And when you're done working with them, a lot of times they won't even go in and bother closing the contract. They'll just forget that there's an open contract. And I did the same thing. I kept forgetting that there was open contracts. Then all of a sudden at the end of the year, I go through and I clean house and I realize there's all these open contracts that we were done working together, but I never actually closed the contract. I never took advantage of that window of time in which I could have closed the contract when they even still remembered who I was, gotten a good rating and review from them and then been good. Um, so I have all these no feedback given because by the time I actually got around to closing the contract, they either forgotten who I was or they, um, it was too long ago for them to remember whether I did a good job for them or not, or, or they're just not even getting the email saying, Hey, go ahead and rate and review this person. Whereas when I just barely worked with him in messages, I can tell them, hey, I'm closing the contract. I'd appreciate a five-star review. If I did a good job, if not, let me know what I need to do different so that you're satisfied. <coughs> um, now, luckily, Upwork finally changed it to where it used to be that when you had no feedback given, it would hurt your job success score. And now it does not. It helps your job success score if you do have positive feedback, but it does not hurt it if you don't have any feedback. It does hurt it if you have negative feedback. Um, so thank goodness Upwork finally changed that because honestly, the majority of the reasons why you don't get feedback is because the client just doesn't have time or they totally forgot or you're not following up with them about it. And that's why. Um, now my job success score now, it used to be 100% for a while. It recently went down to 99%. And honestly, I have no idea. I think it's just very natural that sometimes it just fluctuates between 100 and 99. If it starts to drop significantly less than you, so instead of just one percentage point, if it drops from 100 down to 90 or 95 down to 90 down to 80, you know, if it's making those big jumps, then you got to have reason to be concerned. Maybe a, 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 a free a, a client left you a really bad review and you got to go check in on that or something. Um, but don't get worried if it just drops by one or two percentage points. I've seen that fluctuate before. And honestly, I have no explanation of why. So if you want more help on your Upwork profile and your proposals, go check out my course, Freelance Family Men, uh, com and go to the course section, Upwork Mastery. It's only $37 right now. And if you're part of the next 50, which is filling up to sign up, I will review your Opera profile for free. So take advantage of that. And I'll see you next time.